Hey everyone, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here, reporting, uh, reporting, recording a video from my chess center. Karen and I have been working nonstop, and uh, yeah, we're almost ready. We did a lot of stuff today and yesterday and the day before. We get home about two in the morning. We get here about nine o'clock in the morning, so that's probably enough. Uh, tomorrow and Sunday, I'm going to be playing in a tournament here. I'm um, not here. <laughs> uh, we don't open until the ninth. Um, uh, it's one of Thad Rogers' tournaments. Look at about 120, 130 players. Uh, five rounds. I should play all five rounds, unless I withdraw. <laughs> uh, so you'll have those games over the next week or so. Um, I wanted to look at a game that I played against um, Lenderman a few years ago in the U.S. Championship because a student of mine was showing me a game, and it reminded me of this game. And I don't think I made a lecture on it on my page, but probably I have in St. Louis. Okay, this was 2006 or 2007 U.S. Championship. It'll it'll be in the in the notes. Okay, he tried to play the Smith Mora Gambit, or as they call it in Europe, the Mora Gambit. They're not too fond of Ken Smith. He was not such a strong player, good poker player. Okay, and after C3, of course, I wrote a book called The Fine Gold Defense with my co-author Bob Schifoni, also known for poker, and a good friend of Ken Smith's. Um, but I figured that's what he would prepare for us. So I played D3. I actually had a bad result with D3 against um, Julio Becerra in the U.S. Chess League about five years ago, maybe. Um, yeah, I got crushed pretty badly. Okay, so this was uh, over 10 years ago. C4, which is the common move. And now we get sort of an accelerated dragon kind of position, um, which I guess is sort of normal when you play D3. And the computer says white's a little better. It's not really fascinating. And you get some position like this where I guess in most accelerated dragons or dragons, you know, white's knight is on f4 and his bishop's on e2 and his pawn's on h2. So it's a little bit different. Like to me, this seems like an improved version for black. But I think the computer is like white. So, okay. Uh, I played knight g7 because the knight on f6 really can't go anywhere. So you want to go to c5 or e5. Um, and another idea, which the engine also doesn't like, is I'm going to play f5 and attack. Rawr! Um, that doesn't work uh, in theory, but theory and practice are the same in theory, but not in practice. So, worked pretty well this game. Okay, queen d2, knight c5, rook c1, it's all sort of standard moves. Rawr! f5. And here the engine wants him to play bishop to b1 to save his bishop. Which I guess makes some sense, because you want to keep defense on the e-pawn also. He took on f5, and now uh, the computer thinks it's about equal if I just take and play bishop f5. But, I don't know, that seemed sort of boring, so I played a little more enterprisingly. Um, I played g takes f5. The computer doesn't like that move. And I just want to attack on the king side. So, you know, if I lose, then, you know, I've lost more games than you've played. Okay, bishop e1, keeping his bishop is correct. King h8, I want to attack down the g-file. Rawr. Also, I don't like king on g8 because it's on the open diagonal. Rook d1 is good. Queen e8, I didn't want my queen on d8 because I don't want to worry about bishop takes c5 ever because, you know, he's got a lot of pieces here. And I want to attack his king somehow. Not sure how exactly, but somehow. Uh, knight d5. Obviously, threatening knight c7, forking my queen and rook, frankly. So I played rook b8, stopping that. Knight d4 is a good move, putting his knight in the center. Bishop d7, developing my last piece. And again, the computer doesn't believe that um, black has an attack because the computer can defend against my attack. And therefore, I have like a weak h pawn isolated. I got some weak squares in the center and the queen side. My opponent can kick me. And, you know, my bishop on d7 isn't the most active. My rook on b8 is not very active. But I have attacking chances. So, yeah. Showed you engine. All right, so b3. I think the engine wants him to play b4, but it always likes white. Queen f7, putting some more oomph into the move f4. I get some more f-file defense, and I defend e6 some more. My rooks are connected. Knight takes e6, computer likes that. b4, computer likes that. 
computer likes b5, and it also likes bishop takes a7. And you know, obviously, white's going to have an advantage in chess, and if you want to win against a good player, you have to take some chances. So I took some chances. b5, I played f4. Um, now that I have a lot of pieces defending f4, I can play f4. So, and um, he took on a7, which is, again, the engine move. Rook a8, once again, he played the engine move, bishop b6, and I played bishop d7 because my... I'm going to lose my bishop now, so. Okay, and now he made um, two very bad moves in a row, after which he's lost. So in this position, white should just chill and say, I'm up a pawn, and if my opponent doesn't attack and mate me, I'm up a pawn. So he should do that. And he can make moves like f3, blocking my f-pawn. He could play rook e1, taking the file. But he played bishop a5. And the point of bishop a5, well, there's two points. Um, he's vacating b6 for his knight, because that's sort of a fork. And maybe he'll play bishop c3 and, and trade off my dark squared bishop, which, you know, pretty nice bishop. And a computer doesn't like bishop a5 because it's not related to my attack. It's just ignoring my attack. And although usually you could ignore my attack, I mean, you know, I might mate you. Um... Mama Jarov ignored my attack for a while. He knows who I am. Um, and he got unlucky. And again, I, I say these things a lot, but sometimes you guys have cotton in your ears. You know, when things happen in chess, that doesn't change the chess dynamic of the world. That's just one game. So maybe you're 1,500, and maybe you lost to a 1,200, and you don't like that. But... I mean, if you lose to 1,200 every game, then, okay, maybe it shouldn't be 1,500. But anybody can have a bad game. Anybody can have a bad tournament. A lot of people have bad years. And that doesn't really mean your, your chess career is different than you thought it was. So if I beat Lenderman, he's still better than me. And I beat Lenderman twice, and he's still better than me. Um, I've beaten Elvest twice. I've beaten Defermian twice. I beat a lot of guys twice, and they're better than me. But, you know, sometimes you win. And uh, I beat Mama Jarov with black, and if I had black against him nine more times, um, my score wouldn't be so good. But okay, that was the one game I won, so that was the game we played. And um, this happens in chess, you know, somebody's the better player, which means they win 60, 70, 80% of the time, which means, as they say on The Simpsons, 20, 30, 40% of the time you don't win. So I'm paraphrasing, but I'm sure you know the episode. <sighs> don't know episodes from 24 years ago. Terrible. Okay, so bishop a5 is not a good move, and f3. Now, this is pretty funny. Uh, Akaru Nakamura, I believe, won this tournament, although I could be wrong. It could be the one that Onishuk won. Definitely one of them won because I played two consecutive U.S. championships in San Diego and La Jolla, which are near each other, and Akaru won one, and Onishuk won the other. I don't know which one this was. So, in fact, I can't even tell you which one won in La Jolla and which one won in San Diego. But let's see. If I remember correctly, Onishuk won in San Diego and Hikaru won in La Jolla. Pretty sure that's right, based on my recollections of the tournament. But anyway, I'm not sure which one this is played in because they were back-to-back -back and they're near each other. One thing I do remember was it was much cheaper to get a round trip to Los Angeles and then rent a car then get a round trip to San Diego. Man, that was expensive. Those are the things you remember. Okay, so the reason I mentioned all of this to you, droning on and on, um, I get paid by the hour, is Hikaru, after the game, said to me, I didn't know who was winning, but I knew after F3 you would win. So, yeah, when you see White's king and you see that I've played F3 and his pieces are on the other side of the board, you tend to favor black. And he doesn't even he doesn't even mean that Black's winning. He said he just knew I would win. So, uh, yeah. And of course, if two supercomputers are playing, I'm not going to win. Um, in fact, the computer says it's equal here, and it gives this crazy line. Uh, and after the move that was played by Lenderman, maybe he's losing. So he should play Bishop e4. And then his bishop is defending his king and attacking my f-pawn in the center. So that's 
very good move. And the computer says all zeros. It gives some really strange line. Um, I'm not sure if what would have happened if he had played bishop e4, if I had played a good move, or if either one of us would have played well. But bishop e4 is the best move. And these are the kind of positions, as Akaru said, black's usually going to win because black's attacking white's king. And the engine says there's one way to defend. So since there's like 35 legal moves, you're just not going to find it. Okay, he played knight b6, attacking all of my pieces. And I ignored him, of course. Hey, my wife's texting me. Uh, oh, yeah, that is a funny post. She sent me a picture of what this room used to look like. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have another funny story about that. I guess I like stories. Um, when I was in St. Louis all the time and I lived there and I was at the chess club every day, the Hall of Fame across the street, which is amazing, uh, I was there when it wasn't the Hall of Fame yet, and it looked like you would just tear it down because it was like an abandoned, terrible place. And they said, oh, yeah, we're going to put the Hall of Fame here. And I'm like, all right. And then about eight months later, it was a palace. I don't, I don't even understand what happened. It took like the worst building in the world and made it the best. So if you don't see it before, you can't really understand. And this is sort of the same. I saw this room, the tournament room. If you ever come to Atlanta and come to our chess center in Roswell, you'll be impressed. It didn't look good. It looked bad. But yeah, when you pay contractors who are good to do work and they do good work, they can make things look good. So anyway, yeah, we're really impressed with the center because we saw it before um, they started fixing stuff. So, wow, it was, uh, I don't know how they do that. They take a place that looks terrible and make it look great. So, anyway, good for us. Um, what was I saying? Let's see, Homer Simpson, Peter Griffin. Oh, no, I wasn't saying that. Oh, yeah, you guys are great. You guys leave great comments. Very good suggestions. That's what I was saying. <laughs> okay, some guy bet me $1,000 I couldn't say it with a straight face, and he gave me 100 to 1 odds. We call those McGregor odds, but I didn't take his bet. Okay, so knight f4, ignoring all of his threats because I want to checkmate him. That seemed like a good idea. And, um, yeah, here he's in a lot of trouble. So, um, yeah, what did he do? I can't remember what move he made, but he's already losing. He played knight takes d7. Okay, that's I guess, the reason why he played knight b6. Okay, and I played rook g8, and I'm down a piece, but... None of his pieces are defending his king, so that's not good. And um, let's see. what. Oh, you know what? I was telling you earlier that he should have played bishop e4. I think he can play bishop e4 here. Hmm. Yeah, it might have been a couple moves off. Yeah, I've been wrong before. You guys use your engines and write crazy comments. Delete, delete. Okay, and he played. Yeah, that's right. He he could have he could play bishop e4 here and he's equal. Yeah, man, that's the kind of equal where I want to have black because this king is under terrible pressure. Okay, bishop c3, the losing move. You could ignore everything I said earlier in the video. Everything, uh, even the stuff that was true. Knight e2 check. That's uh, pretty funny because when he played knight b6, he was forking my pieces. Now I play knight e2 and fork all his pieces. King h2. Bishop takes c3, which is just unleashing my rook to go to g2. Um, so his problem is I, want, I don't really want to take his queen because that would make the game last longer. What I want to do is play rook g2 check, king h1, and then attack his h-pawn with either queen h5 or queen e6. And you get to defend your H pawn, so I meet you. Uh, so Lenderman didn't like that. Um, so for example, Rook takes C three is the obvious move, I guess. And then here you just lose. So yeah, you can't do anything. And not only that, I'm not down much material here. Uh, I'm down uh, a piece. Is that right? I'm only down a piece. Wow. I'm just down, yeah, I'm down one piece, and I'm threatening mate, and I'm threatening your rook, and this rook's coming over. This knight's pretty silly. Yeah, so with so many arrows, you know I'm winning. Okay, so he played queen h6, which stops all my queen h5, queen e6. How am I supposed to meet you if you don't let me? And now, in a very strange, unusual weirdness that I don't understand, I'm not down any material. 
So I sacked my bishop on d7, but then I took his bishop on c3, and he didn't take back. So this position has equal material, and now I'm a pawn up. Yay. Oh, wait. I was a pawn down. Now it's equal. Man, I'm a good chess teacher. Huh. No wonder I win all my games, because I understand the position so well. Okay, and he played the only legal move. Now this is funny. Now that I can't attack his h-pawn, because his queen is on h6, um, if I run with my queen somewhere, rawr, then he'll play queen h7 mate. The truth hurts. Yeah, so I have to sort of keep defending the h-pawn. Um, yeah. Okay, so I played g8, Morphe style, getting all of my pieces involved in the attack. And this is equal material, although his knight on d7 isn't very good. It can't go anywhere that's reasonable. And his king isn't very good. Uh, if it was my move... I guess I'd play rook takes f2, threatening knight g3 check. It doesn't look so good for him. He played rook f1. Darn, he stopped my only threat. Okay, now you remember earlier in the video, I said, this was about a minute ago, I said, oh no, he's defending his h-pawn, he's mating me, I can't do anything. Rawr. Okay, so I made a move that took care of all of that. So pause your video and find a move that gets his queen to undefend his h-pawn. Removing the guard, um, attraction, I don't know. I don't know what they're called. I'm not the one on trial here. I'll wait. I'll look at my beautiful chess center. Mm, nice. Oh, look at this pen I got. See, it has like, has our name and phone number and web address. Aren't you excited at home? And if that didn't excite you, I, we have pencils that are the same. See? Yeah, that's right. Probably can't see that, but... I've watched you guys play chess, so that's not really shocking. I made a video a couple of days ago of the chess center. I'll make one in about three more days because we've done a lot since then. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of nonsense to do that should take five minutes. It takes about five hours. So that's the most fun you can have. Okay, well, I rambled on. I'm sure you found the winning move. And the reason I'm sure is lots of moves win. So if you found the wrong move, you'll probably still win. And the correct move, which wins the quickest, is bishop to d2. And I know it wins the quickest because he resigned. So can't win quicker than that. Um, I guess he could have resigned while I was thinking. Now, obviously, frankly, I'm threading his queen and his rook. If he moves his queen away and I don't have mate, which I do, I could take a free rook. Then I'm up a rook. So that's not good. So the only move that makes any sense is to take my bishop. He chose to resign instead because queen e6 and queen h5 both lead to mate in 5. When I say mate in 5, that's because the engine's giving all of his pieces away. So, um, yeah, you can't seriously defend h3. And I can jump over your pawn if you do. See the arrow? Aha. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so you're incredibly lost here. Also, it announces mate. So after bishop d2, it, he can avoid mate by not taking my bishop. Then it says, like, I'm plus 23 or something, or some silly number. So he resigned here. It's sort of funny in the final position, material is equal, but my attack is better than his. My knight, which is sort of the mirror image of his knight, my knight's really good and his isn't. Um, yeah, and somehow my king is safer, even though they're both on the h-file. Yeah. What do you know? The Mysteries of Life. So that was a game I played Lenderman, and the reason it reminded I was reminded of this game from my student's game yesterday or two days ago was... His position wasn't good, but he had a lot of tricky chances. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was like this game. And I think I think he might have won that game. Maybe. It reminded me of this because it was something the engine says you're getting crushed, then you win easily. So anyway, that was a fun game. Probably less fun for Lenderman, but he got his revenge, and he'll get his revenge again. That's The problem with Lenderman is he's better than me, so he keeps getting revenge. Pfft, horrible. Terrible. So atlchessclub.com, you know the drill, atlchessclub.com slash donate, dot com or clom, either one, as long as you click the donate. Um, look at our events page. I think in about four or five days-ish, we'll be able to register online and pay us for events if you want to enter events online. Um, I'll give you guys the schedule because you're without me, your life is almost meaningless. Almost. Wow, it's being really nice there. Uh, Mondays were closed. I guess that's all you have to know. No, uh, we're open every other day. Uh, Tuesdays we have end game lecture given by me. Wednesdays we have a month long tournament. You play every Wednesday. And then at the end of the month, you're like, I played every Wednesday. I didn't win any games. What happened? But then you can play next month. That's so okay. Uh, Thursday we have great players of the past lecture. So maybe I'll give a lecture about me. Hmm, great players of the past. Oh, great. Never mind. Uh, Friday we have a blitz every Friday. Every Friday, Friday night, Friday night blitz. 
Saturday, we have a one-day tournament, usually, unless there's a big tournament in the area, then we let them have their tournament. Sunday, we have classes. Uh, between 12 and 5.30, there's four classes. Each is one hour for different rating level. The first class is for lower-rated players, and it gets a little better each time. So make sure you get here by 12, because that's probably the class for you. And then we're closed on Monday. After you've been humiliated in my class, you need a day off. So that's fair. Uh, once a month, we have bug house tournaments on Friday after the Blitz tournament, the monthly ones. We're having a big Thanksgiving tournament on Thanksgiving weekend. We expect about 90 players. Um, I think there's $3,000 in prizes, unless there's not. But they're guaranteed, or as Mike Hummer would say, unconditionally guaranteed. So if there's a hurricane and a flood and we're underwater, we're still guaranteeing the prizes if you can find us, but you can't. So... Like and subscribe here on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Wow, I got that from memory. Amazing. Go to our website and look around and uh, come on September 9th. My birthday is September 6th. So if you think you might want to donate but you're not sure, you can send me a birthday present. Either way is good. Uh, my birthday is 9669. And my son's birthday is 69. My son was born in Europe. So actually, both of our birthdays are 69. Let's see, wait, how does that work? Yeah, because in Europe, no, no, in Europe, his birthday is 9-6 because they write things backwards in Europe. So if you live in Europe and you write my son's birthday, you would write 9-6. And if you're an American, you write my birthday, you also write 9-6, even though we're born on different dates because that's how we roll here. And um, he was born in 91. It only has one nine in it. So he had to move away. Terrible. So my son was born in Belgium, which you already knew or you forgot. Maybe I forgot. And as a special birthday surprise, without a surprise, my son and his girlfriend Lulu are coming here on Monday and visiting for a few days because somebody has to clean up this place and it ain't going to be me. I'm much too important. What's that? I have to come clean? Okay, I have to go clean. My wife said so. Bye, everyone.